Hi everyone, welcome to chapter two, proofs. Okay, so proofs is a very logical um, chapter, right? There is not much of conceptual content, and I mentioned this before in my previous video, if you saw it. So there's a lot of you know manipulation, just mathematical work that you have to do, and there's not a lot of con concept that you need to know. You just need to be able to manipulate certain things and, you know, be, sh be sure to show that, you know, what the question asks you, you know, you are able to show that through uh, working, through using your mathematical knowledge that you, you previously know. That, this, you know, you can use the simple algebra, different uh, rules, just logarithm rules or exponential rules and so on and so forth. So uh, IB, IB, the chapter in IB, right, of proofs is comprised of three sections, right? So the first section that I'm going to talk about is direct proof right well, i'll just put it in simple terms direct proof and here all we're trying to show is that lhs is equal to rhs and what this means is left hand side is equal to right hand side so what's going to happen is you might be given a situation you know show that uh some of some some e some e all even numbers or uh, are, are all odd numbers is even i don't even know if that's true to be honest right and you have to show that right you cannot use uh here let me just put that cannot uh can't use numbers or integers to prove your point you have to work with the variables right have to use let me put in star here have to use variables okay because what we're trying to prove here is that this suppose we're given a statement and we we're told to prove it that 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 statement must work for all real numbers right or you know to the or it must work for the domain of the numbers that are mentioned right it must work for that right not just for certain numbers right and then you know it doesn't work for other cases and then you know it's not really a proof you're just you're just adjusting the situation to match the way you want it to match the situation you wanted to match with right so you have to use variables here Okay, again, I won't go into the detail. I'll definitely go into the, you know, minute details when I talk about, and I'll make in the next video called the direct proofs. So you can take a look at that. Uh, so next thing we have, my favorite is proof by mathematical induction, right? Proof by mathematical induction. And, you know, uh, before the new syllabus came in from 2021, this was a very common question. You would see at least one of this question in paper one, section A, because obviously you don't really need a calculator for this. So you would see, you know, section A, paper one, you would see at least one, one question of seven to six marks, I would say, of this question. So what really this, the concept of this is, you know, you're given some, you know, statement here, right? You're given some statement and, you know, obviously you're trying to prove it's true. So they're basically comprised of three steps, right? So step one, and then step two, and most importantly, the step three. This is where majority of the marks lie in, right? You, these two steps, you probably you know work like two to three points, but step three is worth majority half, you know, major half of the points, right? More, most of the weightage, weightage of the question lies in step three. So suppose you know you're trying to prove that you know, okay, so you give it some pattern, okay, it's true. So it's, maybe it's true for n is equal to one. Then you take some random, you know, integer n is equal to k. It's true for that as well, or you know, you assume that it's true for that, and then making this assumption right here. So assume right you make an assumption here and you prove here it's true and then you prove here that it's true for k plus one by using this this expression that you derive from here so you prove it's true here as well by using this in here so this is where a lot of manipulation comes in manipulation and adjustment right and adjustment Right. My, my math teacher never liked me using this term manipulation, right? But I always use the term manipulation because you are manipulating, you are moving around, you are adjusting numbers, you're manipulating so that they match the condition that's given to you, right? That is the entire purpose of this, right? This is the entire purpose of proofs as a whole. That is why you were doing what we're doing. You're trying to adjust it around to meet the conditions and thus, you know, show that this exists or this is applicable to all cases. Okay, now the new part, the, this is the new edition of from 2021, which was proof by contradiction. Right? 
I, I like this one as well. It's kind of new. So contradiction. Okay. So here what we're told is that we're given some statement, right? We're given statement Y or statement X. Let's keep it simple, right? We're given statement X and we're trying to prove that it's true or false by contradicting it, right? So we're trying to prove by contradicting it really sounds weird right it, it kind of confuses you at first but i'll give you an example right i won't solve it but i'll just show you proof by contradicting so i'm going to say that you know show that for example i'm going to put example here and i'm going to say show that this is probably the most common example you can find it on google if you just google it so show that square root of three is irrational okay irrational so what we do, what well, the first step here would be, we assume square root of three is rational, right? We contradict it. That's what we do here. So we say that square root of three is rational, okay? And then we work our way around. So if it's rational, you know, we can write it in terms of P by Q form, and then we do more simplification, and we work around it, right? We adjust this trying to meet the condition and trying to prove that it's rational. But what actually happens is as we work along, we are not able to prove, right? This not able to prove it. And because we're not able to prove that it's rational and it's not by P by Q form, right? That this 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 assumption is false. Thus, this assumption is false. Okay, and because the assumption is false, we know it's that it's not rational. And if it's not rational, it is irrational. Right? This is the entire concept of contradiction. Right? This is how, that's how contradiction works. Right? You can find multiple. You can find you no. Know, show that pi is irrational by um, through proof of proof con, proof by contradiction. Right? We can show that as well. There are multiple different, you know, examples that, that you can find in Google. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll even show some basic examples like this one and a few more, right? This is not, though, this chapter is not really a new rocket science chapter. It's nowhere close to calculus. It's nowhere close to trigonometry. It's nowhere even close to geometric, you know, sequences and series for that matter, right? It's a very small chapter, very, uh, very less weighted in the IB paper. If I'm, I'll probably find one question. I, I doubt, I'll be very surprised, even if you find two questions, and that one question will probably be worth five to six marks, right? It's a very simple thing, very logical thing, you know, it's a chapter that you do once, you do once in the beginning right now, and then you forget about it until you're gonna, you know, until you come to past papers, until you come to practicing past papers, right? You don't even have to revise much of it. Maybe if you wanna revise, you could revise the steps in mathematical induction, right? But essentially, you're actually just working on your mathematical skills. You're not even working on any concepts. Again, like I said, this is probably the most important thing. You know, this chapter probably improves your manipulation and adjustment skills right here. That's what you're trying to do in this entire chapter. I'm going to put an arrow here and here just because, you know, it's used in both, um, in all three proofs, actually. So I'll, I'll show you guys multiple examples because I think that's the best way to, you know, be good at this chapter uh, if i if i were to say so yeah that's about it for the introductory video and uh first video no first official proper video i would say would be on direct proofs then i'll go in mathematical induction and then proof by contradiction so yeah uh this is how this chapter is going to play out and yeah that's about it so i'll see you in the next one Bye bye